hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Leta Bupula and you're watching living young and spiritually with myself if it is your first time here welcome to the family I hope you enjoyed here and if you do please do subscribe and be a part of the family if you are a returning subscriber welcome back my dear we have missed you um, and thank you for joining us again um, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. If you haven't seen my previous video, please do. And if you did, I hope you enjoyed it and you gave it a thumbs up as well. Um, so as you guys can see, um, by the title of this video, we're going to be talking about whether Christianity is limiting in its freedom. Is it really limiting? Is there really freedom, you know, in Christianity? And what really made me feel like this question was because of the things I wanted to get up to. And so I kind of, I was kind of fighting with God, but now I got my answer and we're here, you know. So um, without further ado, let's get into this video. So, um, we're going to start by reading from our Bible. We're going to read, you know, me and reading verses, we do the readings just for reference and also for context, you know. And so we're going to be reading from, I just lost it now. And another thing, guys, my glasses broke. My glasses broke while I was on a video call. Yes, me. So, anyway, I'm not get into it. So, just like bear with me, please. If you see that, connect it off. Just unsee. Okay. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8 to 9. Um, verse 8 in NLT says, It is true that we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We do not lose anything if we don't eat it. And we do not gain anything if we do. Verse 9 in um, GNT says, be careful, however, not to let your freedom of action make those who are weak in faith fall into sin. So, just for context, guys, please look. I really need to wear them. My eyes are even hurting from these eyelashes. So, please bear with me. Anyway, so just for context, um, the scripture um, in the earlier verses, it, it's just basically speaking about how, you know, um, the cultural practices that people do of doing like thanksgivings for ancestors and sacrificial things you know for their idols and their gods and stuff like that so it's with reference to that that we who serve the ultimate almighty living god us who serve um the real god the main god the god god the almighty the creator of the earth and the heavens you know for us who serve um god we know that we are not supposed to be like taking part in those things you know and not we're not supposed to we know that it is not advisable to like take part in those things right but if someone were to bring you a plate of food and they told you that okay this food is from our thanksgiving or whatever the bible says you will gain nothing from eating it but you will also lose nothing from not eating it you know and for me it has a lot to do with a lot of the things that I want to take part in in life, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to do because I just feel like it isn't written in black and white, it isn't clear in the Bible what God, how God feels about it, you know. And when I look um, into, I think it's chapter seven or chapter nine, um, it speaks about marriage where Jesus advises those who are single not to get married. He says, Marriage is not a sin. He says, If you can't hold yourself, get married, you know, do it. Um, and for the sake of you know being pure as one right but i wouldn't wish that you guys get married if i could choose i'd choose that you guys stay single why because marriage has a lot of problems and i'm trying to spare you from it verbatim that's literally what the bible says and how he says that you know but the point is it isn't a sin so it got me to understand that there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily a sin that God would rather prefer that we do in a different way or maybe we don't do, but it isn't a sin. You know what I mean? And 
it's like more of advice you know say i if i were you i would rather but you know you know and the reason why he advises us to do things differently is because we need to be mindful of those who are who have weaker consciences those of a weaker faith you know that things we do are going to affect that with the, that one with a weaker faith you know that person with a weaker faith that person who's still trying to find their feet in christianity that person who's trying to develop their relationship with god our actions are going to contribute to what they do if they see me smoking cigarettes posting cigarettes today tomorrow i'm posting about the bible and everything like that they what they think matters because we are trying to nurture their thoughts, you understand? So what they think matters in the sense of how do they perceive our God? How do they perceive our faith, our relationship with God? What does the Bible say and how do we work, live or move um, versus what the Bible says we should work, live and move, you know? So basically for me, it made me feel like it's not necessary. It's not at all about what I choose to do. And this is with reference to things that God does not refer to as sins you know this is not with reference to fornication committing adultery um idolize idolization those things right but things typical things right one can argue with touches my argument is that in the old testament yes you know there was that and then christ came and basically just like all of that vanished you know and then we pierce our earrings so why is it not a sin for me to get my earrings pierced but it's so much of a sin for me to get a tattoo. You get what I mean? So this scripture for me, it was really just giving me a solid understanding. Another example would be with me. I enjoy drinking wine and I don't drink wine like to be drunk, you know, and I don't drink wine to like avoid my problems and, you know, all of that. And when you read the Bible in the Old Testament, God made wine and jesus created wine fine and it was for people to be merry it was for people to be in a jubilatory mood and to celebrate you know what i mean and it became a sin when people began to use alcohol um as or rather, when people began to idolize alcohol, you know, they made a god out of alcohol. They drank alcohol to forget about their problems. They drank alcohol to make themselves feel better or to suppress their feelings. So they idolized alcohol, and that's when it started becoming a sin, you know. So in the New Testament, when you read as part of the sins, some versions say, do not drink alcohol. Other versions say, do not be drunk of alcohol, but be drunk of my spirit, you know. So me, who's someone who genuinely enjoys drinking my wine, I know that... And even at restaurants, guys, legit, there's no, wherever I am, if I'm having one, you're going to find a, a glass of water next to it or a bottle of water next to it. Because what I'm trying to do is balance the alcohol intake to make sure that I'm not drunk, you know, and I'm out of control and things of that sort. But I genuinely drink wine because I enjoy the taste of wine. I think it goes really well with, with drinks. And if you're with your family and you're having a good time and you're celebrating, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. What makes it wrong is the intent. In the same way, marriage isn't wrong. Sex in marriage isn't wrong. Sex out of marriage is kind of, not kind of, it is a sin. You get what I mean? So, and for me, it makes me feel like God, when Jesus created all of these things and in these verses, when he's giving advice, you know, and, and he's, he's, preferences it comes from a place of him understanding what it's like to live in flesh you know and he knows um how difficult it is to live a life that is free from sin you know that's what the bible says he without sin let him cast the first stone you know what i mean because he knows that it is difficult so for me it makes me feel like he was very mindful and those are things that we don't realize about the bible is that god and jesus was very mindful of certain things there's so many things that we can complain about in the bible but we don't actually realize that there are parts where god thinks from us and jesus thinks from a perspective of in the flesh you know on a day-to-day -day what we go through as humans and so he creates and he tries to find ways in which we can really survive the world and and the physical flesh and at the same time glorify him so that's why for instance he created marriage he said if you 
no you cannot hold yourself out of marriage like you know hold yourself from sex and everything then get married so that you're able to fulfill your needs and your desires you get what i mean but and so sex is only a sin out of marriage but in marriage it's pure it's beautiful so the same understanding for me is with my wine that he created it he created it for a beautiful reason he created it for a good reason and then people made it something that it's not and that's where it being a sin comes from so that's really just i guess god's way of of answering me because my question was man you could there's so many things that you can't do as a christian that people say you can't do let's say that there's so many things that people condemn you for doing that people think you shouldn't be doing as a christian because it's not christ-like it's not holy you know but you cannot reference a scripture that literally says do not smoke do not what do not what do not what you know and we also need to understand that the bible is mostly made out of parables you know so that's another thing that i feel like we need to be mindful of is that not everything is going to be black and white there could be a different understanding of what the scripture says for someone else you know but this is how god answered what my question was to say god really is our faith a trap you know is our faith limiting and that's a lot of things that people like saying that no as your question is just uptight and her and her and her you know and now that i got an answer and an understanding now i realize that it's not that these things are wrong you know it's not that god condemns some of these things that we do that he doesn't refer to as sins you know but he would rather prefer that we do them in a different way and in a way that is mindful of those with a weaker faith you know i'm not saying that smoking is wrong i'm not saying it's right either you know what i mean but smoking in public as a reverend or like a pastor who is well informed you know about his journey with god and everything who has the knowledge right in front of someone of a weaker faith that person is just probably just living their own life and doing their own thing and thinking Vele, it's okay to be a wishy-washy Christian, you know, to be an in-between kind of Christian because in any case, my pastor does smoke. You know, not being, not having the knowledge that you may have. And that's where the concern comes in that we need to be mindful of the people who are weaker in, in, in spirit and in faith that our actions can contribute to them leading to further sins you know whereas the intention to is to lead further away from sin but with the things that we do with the understandings that we have we lead people further into sin who don't have a faith as solid as us you know i know sometimes like if i go out and i'm i'm, I'm out and about and maybe i'm just having like a glass of wine or whatever and i decide i want to post it on my instagram and tomorrow i'm going to church say for instance sometimes i wouldn't feel bad about what i'm doing but i would kind of feel like uh, hesitant about posting on my instagram because it's like uh, what is what are people thinking people are probably thinking like i'm playing christianity where i'm so deep and about god you know what i mean like i'm just so mad in love with god i'm about my faith i'm about my relationship with god so that was the only part that would make me feel like ah, i probably shouldn't post it and now it confirms and it's like really you shouldn't post it because what am i doing as i'm i'm exposing people of weaker faiths to ideas that they do not not that they do not know of but to ideas that they can use as justification to act the way they act you know what i mean to say no but your actual servant 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 is doing this so me who's just a starter i can do this and that's also a way in which um the devil dis um is deceiving or deceives these people with weaker faith and further leads them into temptation and sin and things of that sort you know there's also a verse i couldn't find i literally couldn't find it while i was recording i realized i don't know where it went but there's a verse in the bible that said not everything is about self-fulfillment not everything is about yourself and if anything we are here for god we're here to fulfill the will of god we're here to do what god wants us to do it's not about us you know and the main goal is for us to fulfill the purpose that god has for our lives and through that we enjoy it that's that's what you're going to feel fulfilled you know because that is what you're ultimately called to do and you will find fulfillment in that and at the same time you will be glorifying god you know so 
not everything is not a things are not about us but it's about the glory of god and therefore it is about the people who don't know about the glory of god so whatever we do we need to keep in mind those of weaker faiths that we do not mislead them or lead them into sinning and then they make us their references for the things that they do whereas when they have grown in their faith and they've um, grown to understand and have knowledge and wisdom from the Holy Spirit himself, they'll be able to discern and make certain decisions that they need to make. You get what I mean? So um, basically that answered me to say, no, Christianity isn't, it isn't a trap. It is indeed freedom. You know, it is fully freeing. There isn't restrictions and it's just what people, what Christian people do is, Christian people have this thing of thinking they know better, you know, um, <clears throat> and some of them, and the Bible even says that one, the things that they, they know most actually knows nothing, you know, so you find Christians um, who really know the Bible from A to Z and they just, they, they condemn everything and they know everything and everything is right and wrong, you know what I mean, and it's like, well, as a matter of fact, you know nothing, <laughs> that's what the Bible says, I think in the earlier verses of this very, very, very scripture, um, the bible says that so for me it just made me understand that you need to live your life according to the teachings of the holy spirit more than according to the teachings and the preferences and opinions of other people because some people are christians but they may not even have the holy spirit living inside of them so they just study the bible and they tell you what is in black and white and what the bible says whereas some people sit and they dwell in the presence of the holy spirit and god and the spirit teaches them these things and gives them a better understanding and i am one of those for me honestly nobody when i ask people about you know alcohol and like tattoos and stuff and hear what people say the people that i've asked you know they're just they're really just being very diplomatic about the bible you know and what the bible says but it just sounds very diplomatic it doesn't sound like something that the holy spirit wants me to understand so when he finally led me to the scripture himself guys because if you guys know or you see on my instagram story you guys will see that i read my bible like almost every night i read my bible when i'm bored i read my bible like when i just touch my phone like i'm just always you know, in my Bible, and sometimes I don't even know what I'm reading. Sometimes I read a random scripture, and then I find myself reading something that God actually wanted to lead me to. And I feel like this was one of the instances, you know. So for me, it really felt like he gave me an understanding from this, better than what a Christian who just knows the Bible from A to Z, but really, that's all there is to this person, is he just knows the Bible from A to Z, but doesn't really have the holy spirit inside of him when whereas the bible says the holy spirit is your teacher you know he's your advocate he's going to teach you his word he's going to give you understanding to understand the world the work and the desires of god you know so that really brought me to great ease to realize that okay as a matter of fact uh, slight here anyway it brought me to e into ease um as to say okay as a matter of fact you know what i'm doing and what my thoughts are they're not incorrect me wanting to have a tattoo stuff it's not wrong it's just a mess it's not wrong but it's not right because it says i will gain nothing from it and i really won't gain nothing from it but i'll lose nothing from it and i really won't lose anything from not doing it you know in the same way i will not gain anything from doing it that's what scripture says but i need to consider that boy or that girl over there who looks at me and who looks at the life I live with Christ and then when she sees me up close she realizes I have a bunch of tattoos and she finds herself asking so many questions in her head about oh so you can have tattoos and you can be a Christian oh so you can do this and you can still be a Christian you know and then ultimately she just leads astray you know she she does the unthinkable and beyond and I would have been a contributing factor to the sins that she commits and it's not like god is going to condemn me you know to say you're the reason why this person sinned no but i know you know i know so that's just basically what i came to the realization of and that's what i really wanted to share with you guys as a matter of fact guys this video actually was supposed to be about something else um i wanted to do um a story time on how my journey with god actually started um, not really started because I was born into a Christian family, but personally, like, me, when I said, I want him, 
so that will be next in my next video so if you're looking forward to that and if you want to see that definitely do switch on the post notifications so that you're notified as soon as the video is out and also look forward or look out for a vlog i'll be vlogging soon so stay tuned for that furthermore guys i hope that this video was effective in one way or another and you found it useful um definitely apply this in your life don't take what i was making reference to about alcohol and tattoos if it's not like relatable to you you know find something that is relatable to you with what i'm saying and apply what i'm saying to that for better understanding you get me furthermore guys take care of yourselves um and god bless you i'll see you guys in my next video bye